This is the first webinar for Mezi IO on the intro to Lagoon um, presented by Michael Schmidt. So perhaps Michael, you can give us a quick intro. Yes, my name is Michael. I'm the head technology and one of the co-founders of Amazi.io. And I will show you today how you can use our Lagoon containers um, to run a Drupal site locally and also in Lagoon itself. But first, some things about this webinar. Yep. Um, so you can ask questions with the, um, during the webinar via the chat feature or the Q&A feature. Um, or you can raise your hand. And if you raise your hand, I will check um, and I will see you. And then I will ask in voice or I will allow you to talk so you can ask the question directly to Michael. And the video will be recorded. Cool, thank you. So the agenda for today, we're going to first look a bit who is Amazi.io and what we do. Then we're going to look into what specifically is Lagoon. And then we actually go into the good part. We're going to see how do we Lagoonize a Drupal site and also how we deploy such a site to Lagoon. And at the end, we're going to do a Q&A for all your questions. So first to Amazi.io, we are a fully managed cloud and dedicated container hosting company and we use Lagoon. Um, we created Lagoon a couple of years ago and we open sourced it. And today it's what is running all our hosting environments. Um, we can host anywhere in the world. Um, that means even in local data centers at AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, or any other cloud environment. And we're very proud of our chat support, which means you can directly talk to us um, via um, a chat system and you don't have to create tickets and wait for long hours for them to reply. Um, plus everything we do is open source. Um, our global clients include things like government, financial service, universities, you name it. Um, everybody has triple sites and we host all of them. But let's look a bit more into Lagoon. Lagoon is a container hosting for developers. Um, it's built by developers, so you will see later. Um, we have a couple of things. Um, we have CLI tools, we have UI tools, um, but it's really built for developers that need them um, to host fast and um, in a good manner. Um, everything you will see today is containerized from locally to production. And also with using containers, we have a local environment which is totally congruent to production. What means congruent? It means that you have locally the same Docker images running that are also running in production. Um, so these are the same configurations, the same versions, and um, all the same. And so this gives you the certainty that if something runs locally, it also works in production. Lagoon itself is completely open source. Um, that means you can see how the configurations are running. You can see how we do things, but you can also send us pull requests. If you don't like something, if you find a bug, um, we're happy to accept PRs for any kind of changes. Even if it's just that we forgot the dot or a semicolon somewhere, please create a PR and send it over to us. Lagoon um, is actually not a container orchestration system. It works with existing container orchestration systems like Kubernetes and OpenShift. So um, we didn't try to reinvent the world uh, because that's already existing. Very clever people already did that. And so we're just using these things. Lagoon is built completely API first. It has a GraphQL API. And so you can interact with it by the GraphQL or the API or by the UI. And of course, because it's, um, it's just a container hosting system, technically it can host much more than Drupal. We have many other things running in it as well, but today we're going to focus on um, Drupal and PHP. So let's first, uh, let's start with our first topic of today, which um, is called Lagoonize a Drupal site. Lagoonize is what we call when we have an existing Drupal site and now you want to use it for local development or even run it on Lagoon. Um, for that, we're going to go over here to our official documentation, which you can find under lagoon.readthedocs.io. And in there, there is a step-by-step -step, um, documentation that we're going to go through together now that explains you how can you get um, a Drupal running. But first, we need a Drupal site. So over here, I used the really cool um, Composer Create project um, by the Drupal community that automatically creates me 
um, I ran it already because it takes a couple of seconds. Um, it already creates me a fully running Drupal um, based around Composer. And um, so this is a Drupal 8. And um, if we want to look at this, so this is my idea of choice here. And we can see that we have a Composer JSON, and um, we have a Composer lock, uh, we have a vendor folder. So this is already um, uh, just a Drupal, but that Drupal has never seen Lagoon. So we want to see now what needs to happen in order to do that. As it states here in the documentation, um, we need all kinds of different files. And instead of writing all of these files manually, we publish them um, for Drupal 7, Drupal 8, with different configurations. Um, and you can just download them, put them into your, um, into your site, and um, do some small changes, and it will work out the box. The files you can download from the documentation directly as a zip file. I've already done that. And so if you go over here, we can see on the right side, um, these we have a version for Drupal 8 with Composer and MariaDB, with Postgres, with Drupal 7. And there will obviously in the future will be much more coming. And on the left side, we have our Drupal site. So uh, we have here, we want to use a MariaDB site. And so all we have to do now is actually copy over these files. Um, the git ignore, we're going to remove first because OSX doesn't allow you to overwrite an existing uh, hidden file. So I just copy them over here. Um, and then we also have a Drush folder. And we also have a Drush folder over here. I copy all of them over here. And, uh, Copy them over here. And then we have also a web folder. And so this web folder actually um, we also have here already. And um, we copy all these files as well. It will ask me if I want to overwrite the settings of PHP, um, which I want. And so I will overwrite that as well. So this is the first step that we need to do. And um, after we've done that, we can go back into our um, terminal and we can run Docker Compose up dash D. Docker Compose up dash D will now um, build um, our whole Docker images. Um, and after that, it will start the containers um, from scratch. So while this runs, this will take now a couple of minutes. Let's actually look into the files that we just copied in. Um, so the most and first and most important file is the Docker Compose of YAML. This is actually not a specific file by Lagoon. It is a file that um, is used by the Docker Compose tool that comes with most um, standard installations um, of Docker itself. And um, it allows you to define all kinds of changes in um, um, of the default, but the most important thing, it actually defines what type of containers do we want. Um, Docker Compose calls them services, but um, in here we can see we define a CLI container, we define an Nginx container, a PHP container, a MariaDB, and a Varnish. If you want Redis and Solar, you can just uncomment it here. And basically what we can do is we can send, we can change some things in here. So the first thing we need to do we need to give our project a name. Um, I will call that the Lugunize webinar. And the same thing I also do here um, in the Lagoon route. We're going to see right after how these routes work. Um, <clears throat> so these, um, this is the minimum that you need to change. Um, then the, all the other stuff you can look at, you can change it. Um, as mentioned, they're just regular Docker Compose things. <laughs> But this is what we have in more than now five or six years of container hosting. This is our um, knowledge and we have it on here. Let's see over here. Okay, that looks good. Um, I'm just gonna run that again real fast. Then we have, um, if we see some of these services like the MariaDB just uses an image directly. So these images are created by the Lagoon team. They are tested, automated tested, every time that we publish new images, we actually install a Drupal into them and make sure they all work, and we publish them. And they 
are built to run on Lagoon and they also have best practices around, um, for example, here with MariaDB. So that MariaDB is automatic config it's run with Drupal. But some of these services actually define a Docker file. For everybody that hasn't used Docker, that's how you define, that's how you create a Docker image. And we see it here, for example, the Docker file.cli, and we have a file here that is called Docker file.cli. In that Docker file, again, this is just a standard Docker system, and um, that's not by Lagoon. As mentioned, we try to use as much as open source as possible. Um, but what this file defines is basically that we want to use the Amazio PHP 7.2 CLI Drupal um, images that are already included or set up for Drupal. That means, for example, Composer is already installed, and um, Drupal Console is already there, and um, Drush is already installed as a, as a default version. And so now, um, in that file, we define additional things that should happen. For example, we want to copy in the Composer JSON block, and then we want to run Composer install. And then we copy all our files in. Plus, we also need to tell the system, like, um, where is the Drupal root actually located? That's, for example, in Flash Web. If we have some customers that have it in Docker root or somewhere else, you can just change it here. And then we have also Docker file for Nginx and one for PHP. And basically what this does, it just copies the file over from the CLI image to um, the Docker file. <clears throat> Uh, to the Nginx one and the same also for the PHP. So let's see um, what our um, tool did. Okay, looks like we have a fully built um, system. Now we run Docker Compose of D again. And so what you can see, it actually uh, creates all these containers um, that we defined. It will start each of them. It knows the order that has to start them. And after we have them running, I can run the Docker Compose PS, and we can see we have now a CLI, a MariaDB, Nginx, PHP, and Varnix running. So in order to actually go into the containers, we um, use Docker Compose exec. So I basically run bash inside the CLI, and I'm now connected into it. I can see the Lagoon project name. I can see that in app. And if I run an LS in here, we can see all the files are automatically mounted in there. So they exist on my Mac or on your Linux or your Windows, um, but they're automatically, automatically mounted in there. So I can now run Drush um, and see the status. And I can see the Drupal version that is there. Uh, we can see the Drush version. And now what I can run is say Drush site install, and it will automatically install me a site. I don't have to configure anything around MariaDB, where to find it, what all of this, because our configuration state of use environment variables that automatically find by Lagoon. So it finds where the MariaDB is and it will use it and it will install it in there. It's all fully done and nothing for you to, to like configure or to change all of that. So if we actually want to go there, we can see we also copied some files and into sites default. And in here we have a settings.php. And this settings.php tells Drupal where to find all the different environments. And you can see that um, we don't actually use any um, hard coded passwords. And um, usually you don't uh, commit maybe your settings to PHP. In Lagoon you can because all of them are running by environment variables. So Lagoon automatically checks where's the database, where's the username. The same for Solar, the same for Redis, the same for Varnish. All of these things are automatically injected um, without you needing to configure them. And that means our site now um, is automatically there. <laughs> and I can now run a draft status. And it will now give me back my site URL that I defined before. And if I go there, so I go over here, I op open that. And look at that. There we go. Um, we, um, we see now my site. Now you maybe see here, this is actually docker.amazi.io. Now, um, one of the tools that we're using um, that we, we need to install before is called PickMe. So PickMe is a tiny small tool that just um, allows you to run a bit better uh, local containers. It installs, if I shortly, run it here and I run pygmy status 
You can see that PIGMI runs a DNS mask, an HA proxy, and also an SSH agent. Um, they are not necessary, but they make your life much easier because it allows you cool stuff like just visiting um, everything with .docker.mazio. We'll also see later that we use a lot of SSH within Lagoon. It automatically adds an SSH agent. You have Mailhog already in there, all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is needed, and this will then mean, so that means everything that you see today with docker.amazio.io goes to my local compute. Now, let's go through our documentation. So we built all the images, we did the container start, and we checked the status and installed Drupal. Now you might say, well, but Michael, that's nice, but um, that's a fresh Drupal, I have a database. So that's correct. So you can import existing dumps. So for that, I already created a database dump with a Drupal site that has Umami installed. If you don't know Umami, it's a new um, installation profile that shows the capabilities of Drupal much better than the default site installation. For that, I just copy the Umami, the dump, um, wherever I might have it from, I just copy it in here. And we also have some files so I then also copy them into sites default, um, sites default files. They're currently empty. And we can see here all the good um, files of Umami. So I go back to my terminal, connect it to the container again. And in here, I can see now that there's the umami.sql. So any files that I put into the web root are automatically mounted into the container. Um, and so I can now run drush sql dash cli umami sql. And what this will do, uh, drush will open up an sql connection and it will import my umami uh, dump, which now happened. I run a drush cache clear or a cache reload in Drupal 8. And after that is done, and I go back to my site, and I refresh. And now the caches are rebuilt, and we come back with, a, with the whole Drupal site imported. So now I have my site, I have it installed, all the pictures are here, the files are here, and the database is there. Basically now I could completely disconnect from the internet, I can work, and I have a fully local um, site running with all, with containers that are prepared uh, for Lagoon um, and all that stuff. I can also run things like Drush ULI. So Drush ULI will automatically give me a login link um, that I can copy here and I enter it here. And so I'm automatically logged in now um, and I can start developing, I can change stuff, I can delete things and um, whatever there might be. So, that's the first part. We saw that any existing Drupal site works. Um, use the example files, uh, files from Lagoon. They have a ton of knowledge, a ton of, a ton of all the experience that we have from MCIO and hosting. It's all in there. And look at the documentation. It's really your friend. It helps you, it guides you, it gives you cool gifts um, that help you and guide you through the process. That's the first um, part. Then do we already have some questions. So I have one quick question um, from Peter. He's building a decoupled infrastructure with Drupal running backend yes. and a Symfony app running the front end. With, yes. with Lagoon, is it possible to scale container instances slash pods on the front end only without scaling the full infrastructure? It is possible, yes. So um, if we run within Drupal or a Lagoon site, Yes, you can, um, you can add additional containers. So um, you could add uh, containers only for the Symfony part, for the front end and the Drupal part. They will be run in separate containers. And our clusters actually look at each individual server or service and decide if they need to be scaled or not. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is completely possible. We actually have an, an example files for decoupled. So um, on the Maisie, on the GitHub, Amazi.io, you will find not only a fully lagoonized Drupal example already, but there's also a decoupled Drupal example, which shows you how to run multiple um, 
technologies in one Git repository. This one is about the Node.js frontend, but at the end it doesn't matter. It's really it's the same um, if you have an Angular or um, a Symfony frontend. And then I have one more quick question from Tarek. Um, is there any reason why you chose Nginx over Apache? Um, multiple different things. Um, we like Nginx because as a standard, it comes with almost nothing, and then you add to it what you need, while Apache by default is, has a lot of features, and then you need to remove them to make it faster again. Um, we also like the configuration document or how you configure Nginx much better. Plus, we use a lot of Lua um, in it um, for like dynamic things. And that's just what we like more. But we actually have some customers which needed Apache because of some of the modules. We have some enterprise customers that need like Kerberos integrations or other things. And they only really work with Apache. And it's totally possible to replace the Nginx with an Apache if there is a need for it. Good. If you have more questions, there's a whole Q&A session at the end, so um, we have more time then. Now, let's look at how do we actually deploy our site to Lagoon. And you probably guessed it already. There is um, already, there is a documentation that um, explains you how to, do, um, how to do all of that. The first thing that you need to do is you um, need to give us access to the Git repository. So with Lagoon, you can actually decide your own Git hosting. So you can use GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, your own Git servers, or maybe some of the enterprise versions. We don't force you to any um, Git servers. So what I will do here in my example, I will initialize a Git. I will add all the files. Um, I will commit that. And I will now create a new Git repository in my own personal GitHub. I will call it Lagoonize Webinar. I uh, will create that. And I will add the origin to my, um, to my local environment. And now I'm ready to push. Before I do that, though, I, um, as mentioned, we need to provide um, access for Lagoon to actually be able to deploy. And so to do that, uh, you go to settings and um, you add a collaborator. So there is a user called Amazi.io Deploy. And we add that as a collaborator. This will trigger now an automatic response. And um, if we refresh, we can already see the user automatically accepted it. And so now this means Amazi.io has access. Um, if you if this would be a, pers a private uh, repository, you can actually also say that we only need to have a read access. We don't need to write access because we only want to deploy your site. You don't want to change it. Um, and the other thing that we also need is we need to define some webhooks. So um, over here um, in our documentation, we have a documentation which explains you how to give us access um, to it. Because each of the different um, systems have different webhooks. So in here, we can see we have documentation for GitHub, GitLab. And basically, what we need to add is just these hooks. So we go back to my Git repository, and I add this hook. Now, by default, GitHub only put, adds the push event, which is fine, but we're actually going to see later. Lagoon also has functionalities for pull requests. So we not only give and um, send the webhooks for pushers, but also for pull requests. And we add that. And we will see now we have a green tick. So that means GitHub shortly checked if that URL is actually correct. It is correct. And so and we're ready to push. So let's do that. Let's go back to our terminal. And I push that up to my um, GitHub repository. And we can see it pushed it in there. We can go over here and I see the Lagoonize webinar um, is all here. I can see my first commit. 
And now we can go into the Lagoon UI. And in here, we can see that uh, in my overview, I have all the different projects that I have. There's a new project called Laguna as Webinar. And in there, I can see now there's a new environment, Master. So how that? So basically with Lagoon, you don't need to go into a UI and create a new environment because Lagoon will automatically create you environments for each of the branches that you define. So you can with a regex define which branches would you like to create environments for. Now for this test, I enabled the master branch. This means as soon as I push into master, it will create me a new environment. Um, I can see in the environment it's type production. So we already know this will going to be our production. We can see when it was created. Um, that's just a couple of seconds ago. We can see the source. We don't see any routes yet because it's not deployed yet. We'll see them later. But we can see that there is now a deployment running. And this deployment will now take a couple of minutes. And um, while we wait for that, we're going to go a bit further. But we also see we have the backups here. We can add some tasks. We're going to play with that all a bit later. Um, but the UI basically allows you to see your environment, to do some changes on them. But um, you don't actually have to go there first and create an environment and tell which branch. It's all fully automated. So while this happens, let's look at um, some Drush integrations. Because um, the deployment here will actually fail. And the reason is that um, it, there is no database yet. So we first want to do um, make sure that we have uh, Drush access. Now, because this is Drush 9, and Drush 9, unfortunately, has not the full support yet for automated Drush site aliases discovery, we have to do some changes. Um, but you have to do these changes only once. So, and they are, of course, fully documented. So over here, in our documentation, we have a Drush 9. Um, uh, documentation, and we can see here we need to rename a file and we need to run Drush site alias convert. So let's do that. So we go into the container again, we go into Drush, and we see here there's a file called alias Drush and we're going to move that and call it um, lagoon.aliases. And now if I run Drush site alias convert, it will automatically convert me um, and the automated. So what Rush actually does, it talks to the GraphQL API, gets all the environments that are currently there, and we currently have the master, and it will add them as a Drush site, I guess. So if I run Drush SA, I can see here, now I have an Adley good master, and this will actually allow me to connect via Drush, via SSH, into that container, and do, um, if I need to do some Drush commands or I want to do a DB dump and um, all that type of stuff. So while the deployment is still running, um, let's shortly look back and see what it's doing. Okay, still running. Um, so while that happens, let's look at some of the other files because we didn't look at the actual the, the .lagoon YAML file. So besides the Docker Compose YAML file that we saw before, which defines all the different containers and it's also used for the local development, we have another file called .lagoon.yaml that defines for Lagoon all kinds of additional things. And the first thing is which Docker Compose YAML you should actually use because some people have multiple of them. Um, but then you can define tasks. And so with Drupal, um, we have the case that after the Drupal has been deployed, so the code is checked out and the database is provisioned, everything, you want to run additional commands like Drush config import for Drupal 8, maybe Drush feature revert for Drupal 7, uh, cache clears, up DBs, or maybe you want to trigger an external system, whatever you want to do. All of that you can put in these post rollout tasks. And so it would actually be quite cool if we could, um, if we create a new environment, we could tell that system to automatically synchronize the database. So if I create a new branch, instead of going there and updating the database and that stuff, it would be really cool that Drush or a system, Lagoon, would automatically sync. Now, you probably guessed it already. This is possible. So um, we actually have on Lagoon, there's a small wiki. 
And there's a small list, small but growing list of um, post rollout tasks. And so at the bottom, there is one for uh, Drupal and Drush 9. And if I can just copy that over here, I go to my code and I add that in there. And now what this will do, and yes, this looks very much like a bash script because it is one. So you can add here any bash stuff that you want to run every time that all containers have been deployed, they all are started and they were all tested. And um, what this will do, it will check that the Git branch is not master because the master is a production environment. And it will also check there is no tables yet in that database. And then it will automatically sync the database from the master. And it will also automatically sync the database and uh, the files into that um, environment. And then it will run the other commands. Um, and then it will, for example, uh, import the configuration. So all of that um, allows a super flexible system to, um, to where you can define your own workflows. We have customers in here that create automatic Jira tickets from there, or they trigger new relic information, or all whatever you want to do. Then there is another um, uh, configuration possibility in that YAML file in the environment section where you can define cron jobs. So for each of the environments, you can define a cron job, how many times it should run, where it should run. And um, if you have additional cron jobs, you can just throw them in there and they will automatically run. Plus, you can also add, add additional routes. So if you want to run your actual URL, you can add them in there. And guess what? We will automatically create a Let's Encrypt for them. By default, you actually have to disable it. We really believe in the secure web. So by default, we will automatically create a Let's Encrypt for you. So let's see our, um, how our deployment does. And we can see it's failed. Um, if we actually click on it, we can see the, the logs of them. And at the very end, no surprise, it tells us a missing database because we don't have one. So let's. Let's be nice to our Drupal and actually give them that. So we can just run Drush SQL sync. And what this will now do, it will take the database from the local environment and create an SQL dump from it. And it will sync connect. So we can see it will start it on, uh, on, on the source. That is my local. And it will now connect via SSH authenticated my, by my SSH key um, into the site that is running um, on the GUM. And um, it will synchronize it over there. And it will automatically import it there. And this is actually the exact same command that will now also run if we push into any other environment. And um, it's the same process that will automatically run every time um, you deploy a completely new environment. And um, again, it's fully configurable if you want to use another tool or something else that's possible. So let's give that a bit more seconds until the database is imported. This is done. Now we're going to do the same and we're going to run an SQL and rsync. And this will now synchronize the files. Um, as well, because the files we need. And it will do that in the background for us. And the files will be synchronized as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Demo, mm -hmm. looks like my, <laughs> my terminal doesn't like the, my, there we go. Okay, so um, now I want to trigger another deployment. And um, there's actually quite a cool system that we use. Um, so if we read the documentation over here and go to our um, first deployment, so we're just going to use an empty push. And with that, oh, ah, outside of the container. And I will also add all the stuff. So the, all the things I added, and I will add them. 
And so we changed uh, the post rollout with sync. And we push that. And this will now create another deployment. So if we go to our site, so we're here, go to deployments, we can now see it just started another deployment and um, it will update that automatically. Now, you maybe say, okay, that's nice and to go into the UI, but what about uh, better tools? So we really think that um, it's nice to go into UI, but I feel like there could be something better, and there is. So we actually have support for Slack and Rocket Chat um, that you can connect the Amazee.io deploy bot into your chat system. And that means every time that somebody pushes and Lagoon will deploy, it will automatically show you that in the, in the chat system. So we see for the first one, a couple of minutes ago, we pushed into the master and it failed. And we also have an automated link to um, the logs. So we don't even have to log into the UI because we can see the logs right there. And um, now we have a new one, the master, it's not done yet. Therefore, it's still in the pending phase. Um, but as soon as this is done, it will tell us if it actually worked or not. And so we see many customers that have per project, they have a Slack or a Rocket Chat or any other chat system and channels, and they add these deployments in there. So you can see exactly who pushed what, who did start one, did deployment work. You don't have to tell the customer we're deploying now, because if they are in the chat system, they will also see that automatically. So this is another cool way for you to see um, in there. But of course, you have access to the GraphQL API. We actually have GraphQL subscription support. So if you buy, if you write your own client system that can read subscriptions, you can also use them. <coughs> so while this happens, let's actually do some more fun. Um, Let's go into my local environment and and around the rush and on around the rush and the through a line. And we go to my umami. I'm already logged in. Okay, that's fine. Cool. So I will do, let's say, I will do some changes. Uh, I feel like okay, that search bar, I don't need it, and that login thingy on top here, I also don't need. Yeah, it looks much better. And actually, I, I only have a start page, so I want to remove all of that. So this should just show an example of Drupal stuff done. So I will go in here. And because this is Drupal 8, oh, and this is Drupal 8, we have full configuration management support. So I just exported the configuration. By default, we put the config outside of the web directory. So I can see here now, I changed all type of configuration. And I will add that as well. But before I do that, let's create another branch because um, I maybe want to show my change to my stakeholders, my approach managers first. So I add them, I commit, and I remove the header, and I will push as well. And guess what? This will automatically create another branch in another environment. So if we go now into Amazee.io, we can see now that we just had another um, push into um, Michi test. Um, and the UI, we can also see that this automatically created an environment. It has a run um, that is running there. Now, um, as mentioned before, we also have support for pull requests. So maybe you don't want to um, push all your feature branches because your team creates a lot of different feature branches. So we don't want to use that. And um, there's another way that we can also do that by pull requests. So if I go to my Git that I created before, I can see that GitHub suggests me automatically create a pull request. So why not do that? I do that. I call this the remove header and I create a pull request. And this will also, because we enabled it before, create a webhook into Lagoon, and Lagoon will create a pull, an environment for that pull request automatically. So if I go back here, I can see now there's a PR um, environment. And that PR environment 
will actually automatically merge the changes from Michi test into master and deploy that code. So you will see um, the site will look like like it will be when um, the like when you actually clicked that merge um, pull request button. So you can show to all your stakeholders to the team and you can show them how the site would look like and um, when this pull request would have been merged. And this is what we see more and more many of our customers are using. They don't create all the feature branches. Whenever they create a pull request, they create an environment, they test, they um, run maybe a visual regression testing. And when all is good and it's approved, then they merge them maybe into the staging side where they test again and then they merge into the production side. So, um, that's it. Let's see how our deployment does. And it failed. Let's see. Oh, I think I played too much with the with the configuration. Let's let's remove the config import here and um, try again. Well, you know what? Let's let's actually do something else. Let's get into that system. So another thing I want to show you is how you can connect two into the running containers. So let's say the deployment failed now, and we actually want to figure out what happened. So I can run Drush at Lagoon Master at SSH, and now I'm connected into the master environment that is actually running in the container on the site. So I can run Drush status here, and you'll we'll see, um, for example, the site URL automatically has been created. And you can see that this is now my Lagoonize webinar. That's the project name, the environment name, and the cluster that is all of this is running on. So um, it automatically did that. We can also see that now the username, the database username, and the database name are not Drupal anymore like it was locally it automatically created um, a database for us and um, it injected them into the environment. So, um, and then Drupal will pick them up. So let's run a Drush cache clear to see what the, if we maybe get it back. Okay, and now let, let's run a Drush config import. Let's see. Uh, I think I, okay, yeah, let's remove that in here. And I will go out and, um, we'll push again. And so this will now create another deployment. And um, but while this happens, let's already do some. Um, let's start the Q and A. Um, so what we saw in deploy to your site to Lagoon, it uh, reads the Docker Compose YAML, and um, so you can define all your containers there. You can do any workflows. So if you want to re reuse a pull request, a feature branch, or you all also want, always want to push it to master, totally possible. You can automatically sync database and files in the post rollout tasks. Um, so if you create a new environment, they will already be provisioned. And again, documentation is your friend, um, where you can try, uh, where you can see um, even more complex workflows and other stuff. Let's do questions. Cool. Um, yeah, so I have a couple of questions. Um, so can we run manual deployments or do we uh, do they have to be triggered from GitHub or a similar service? Um, yes, there is an API via the GraphQL API where you can trigger manual deployments. Um, we actually have some customers that have like really strict CI processes. So they use, for example, Travis CI. Um, and only when Travis CI says everything is tested, and then they trigger a deployment into Lagoon. 
And so the cool thing is because all of it is containerized, you can actually in Travis run the same containers again. You can synchronize the database from the production environment into Travis while it's running and test. You can run BHEAD tests, uh, PHP unit tests, or any other system you want to run. And so, yeah, there is an API where you can trigger new deployments uh, wherever you want. A um, couple questions regarding cron. So one is you get notified if cron fails and you run cron with Drush. Um, how, are how are the defined cron tasks run via cron or the Kubernetes scheduler? And can you run non-Drush commands via the cron system? Yes. So the first, yeah, how does cron actually work? So the command in here is whatever you define. I could run that command up here. I can put it in there. So you can define whatever you want to run. The example runs Drush cron, but if you have another cron system or you want to run a bash script, um, you can put them in there and you can run whatever you want to do. Um, you can define the schedule as well. Um, it's maybe a bit special with that H. Anybody that has ever used Jenkins um, knows that. So actually Lagoon will automatically define an own minute. So it will spread the schedule of the cron automatically across one hour, but it will make sure that it runs once per hour. And um, yes, about the notification there, um, as of right now, no. Um, we have some customers that created their own bash scripts that run cron, check the status, and if it works um, or if it doesn't work, they may be notified via Slack. But um, we are working on um, if you go to GitHub, there is um, an issue there which talks about to monitor cron jobs and also show each of the crons in the UI so that every time that a cron failed, you can go into the UI and see them exactly and um, what happened. So um, not right now, we don't have notifications yet, but it's definitely something we will implement in the future. Um, one question from the chat was, is it possible to define an external source for the database backups if we only use Lagoon for development and testing and not production? Yes. So there is two ways how to do that. We have some customers that download the database dump, uh, let's say from an S3 bucket um, or any other hosting environment. You can inject uh, secrets into Lagoon. So you can tell your secret to Lagoon and Lagoon will make sure that these environment variables are available. So like you can have your S3 buckets, stuff like that, or in its brush at the end. So we have some customers that let's say host on our friendly competitors, which is perfectly fine. Um, but they want to lose Lagoon for the development because of all the branches and all the possibilities. And they actually add to their um, Drush aliases. They have a second aliases, which is specifically for the production environment. And then you can just, instead of SQL sync at Lagoon master, you would maybe say Drush SQL sync at other hosting company master. So um, there is also an SSH key injected into the running containers. And um, so you can use that and you can add that SSH public key to the other hosting company. And so you can then interact with it. And it's actually quite standard um, for some of our customers to use Lagoon only for development. And um, for the production, we have another site. And for AmazeIO, we have a special pricing around for that. Um, because the dev sites, they actually don't use that much resources. So it's quite cheap to run just dev sites with us. And yeah, a quick follow up on that was the. Yeah. Is it possible to use stage file proxy if not using Lagoon for production? And you can more or less answer that with um, the site I use. Yes, there is. Um, we don't enforce it by default, but uh, one of the things that I may mention too much is you maybe saw that there is a settings of PHP, but there's also production and the development settings of PHP. <clears throat> and this actually allows you um, to add settings only for specific development environments or, and so like here we disable and we enable uh, error logging in a high level, we disable like CSS and pre performances, all these things. And you can change all of that. That's just the best knowledge that we have. So um, this is what a lot of our customers use. Again, we're hosting since more than 10 years, so we have quite some experience uh, what works really well. And one of the cool things here, yes, is the stage file proxy. 
So if you um, you can inject the environment variable for the production URL into the system, and then on development, it would automatically use stage file proxy. And if we go to the production settings, it disables it again, which means um, there's no stage file proxy on the production environment. Cool, thanks. Um, I have three more questions. Are you still okay with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one is, um, so if you want to get into the production container, that container needs to run SSH. No, no. Um, so it is a bit more complicated. None of our containers actually have SSH installed because the containers are not reachable via the internet directly. Um, as in any um, good hosting companies, we think a lot about security. And so um, we never actually expose the containers directly to the world. Um, the SSH system um, happens within Lagoon, and so there is one SSH, um, there's multiple SSH containers running within Lagoon, and then you connect to these, they will authenticate you via your SSH public key, and they will then create a tunnel into the container that is running directly. And the container itself does not need to install SSH, so it uses the, the Kubernetes um, possibility to remotely connect into a shell of any running containers. So you can connect into your um, Redis container, into your Solar container, all of that is possible. And the containers themselves do not have SSH installed for that. Thanks. Um, Docker takes a lot of time to build in which the site might be down. Any way to avoid the issue for deployments to production? Yes, so we actually, um, the deployment process of Lagoon and Kubernetes is quite complex. So, and we use a rolling system. So that means while your, the new containers are built, the old existing containers, they are still running. So even if the build takes Let's go crazy. Let's say it takes an hour. I mean, it probably shouldn't take an hour, but let's say it takes that long. During that hour, the, con the old container is still active and will still serve customers. Then when the building is all done, it will start to create the new containers. But in terms of Nginx and PHP, it will actually create a container on the side while the old one is still running. It will start that container and it will do a short health check on it. So for PHP, it makes sure that the PHP FM is running. For Nginx, we have a small Nginx status in there that makes sure that the Nginx and PHP is all running well. And only then the traffic is switched from the old container to the new container. And if anything goes wrong, it automatically switches back and it uses the old container again. So the actual building of a site does not take your site down and it's only that short switch um, that really happens in a millisecond or two. And then of course, if you run Drush cache clear or like if you need to run anything later, that might make your site a tiny bit slower. There is actually though, if you look into GitHub, there is one quite fresh um, issue in there. We are working on blue green deployments. What that means is that you can create a completely other environment set it up, deploy it, test it. And then when you say, okay, this is now the new production, you can tell Lagoon to switch the routes from the old system to the new system. And you have run all your cache clears already and that stuff. And also if anything goes wrong, you can just switch back. So um, we are working on providing the best development experience, also deployment experience for you, but also for all um, the, your customers. Thanks. And the last question that I have right now, well, actually two more, but um, can we limit the number of default bash commands for a branch or limit that for a number of developers in the team? Can you repeat the question, sir? Yeah. I, I think what uh, Rajab wanted to ask is like, is it possible to limit the types of commands a developer can run per branch? Interesting. So, there is a possibility that you can limit users to access specific environments. 
So you can say, for example, okay, all my team, they can only access all the development environments, but not, not the production environment. That's, that's a possibility. And we never had the case so far that you want to limit the amount of commands running inside the CLI or inside the bash. Um, it would most definitely be possible because at the end, if we look in our CLI, you can change and customize this to whatever you need. So if you want to run an additional tool or maybe a special bash um, prompt or something that checks first if the command is allowed or not, you can add it in there and you can do that. So with using containers, we actually provide everybody a lot of functionality. So um, I shortly peeked over and our deployment succeeded. So we can see the Lagoon 3, it is completed. And now we can also see our routes. So what Lagoon does, it automatically creates for all the services that we deployed that actually have an HTTP access. So Nginx and Varnish, it automatically creates a route. And so if I go to the Nginx one, it now opens me my um, Umami site that I pushed in it. And um, we will see it automatically loaded in here. And I also have a Varnish version. So if you ever wondered how do I shortly disable Varnish, well, you just have another URL. And so these routes, they're automatically created by Lagoon. They have SSL certificates automatically, nothing to worry about. And as we saw in the .lagoon.yaml, you can also define additional routes. So um, they will then allow you to access um, to access your actual site, I don't know, umami.com um, or whatever. But for every environment, we automatically create these, um, these routes. They automatically have um, let's encrypt on them. So, so if we go back to, let's say, the Lagunize webinar and my Michi test, you can see that also for that one, we automatically created an environment and URLs and of course the same also for the PRs. So um, that means they automatically create it and you don't have to worry about um, adding routes all the time, any SSL things, that type of stuff. The last thing I wanted to show is the task system. So um, Lagoon actually realizes that this is automatically and this is a Drupal site and will show you and allow you to run some tasks, like the things that you always need to do. Maybe not everybody of your customers have SSH access, so we can just select here a Drush cache clear, and I add a task. And if we go back, we can see now there's a Drush cache clear running on the CLI service. And there is also possibilities, depending on what services are deployed, it will show you other tasks um, <clears throat> in there um, we have, and you can also do SQL syncs. So you could automatically synchronize between one environment um, to the master and hopefully we don't do that. We would overwrite the master, but we maybe want to do it the other way around. We have support for rsync. You can run an SQL dump, which will then give you a file that you can download via the UI um, directly. And we can see that cache clear is succeeded. And we can see here, um, it actually added, uh, it shows us a cache rebuild um, complete. Um, and the last thing, let's actually close the, the PR um, because we realized we don't need it. And so as you would expect, what Lagoon does now, it will automatically delete that PR as well. So you don't have to go into the UI and delete them and you just remove the pull requests. So if you go back, and to our uh, UI, we can see the PR is automatically removed because the pull request is closed. So it's really, and um, the term GitOps is very high written on our flags and we fully integrate. And as mentioned, that works for any GitHub, GitLab, um, Bitbucket or any other system. Cool. Any more questions? Uh, just the one final question, I guess. Yes. Sebastian, is um, any plans to add CDN support by default? Good question. So 
we don't have right now a default CDN that you can just enable. <clears throat> it's might something, it might be something we want to add in the future. And, but we have support for any of the most known CDNs out there. So we have Cloudflare, CloudFront, Fastly, Akamai. All of them are used by some customers. And for example, our varnish configuration automatically understands that there is another CDN in front of it and it will change its behavior slightly because you need to update them um, a bit. So we have full possibility to use any um, CDNs out there right now, not yet that you can just click a button and you get a CDN via an ACIO, but that might change in the future. Um, if you're interested in that, um, send us an email to hello at amazy.io and we're happy to, to help finding the right CDN and, or how to integrate. That's it. Thanks everybody. Um, we will um, create a video out of this. Um, we will publish it. And as mentioned, if you have any questions, please reach out to hello at amazy.io and um, ask any questions, also technical ones. If you find the bug, if you find a typo, please create a pull request. It's an open source tool and we all can work on it together and make it better. Thanks everybody. Cool. Thanks a lot, Michael. And uh, thanks for everyone for attending as well. And see you maybe next time. Bye-bye.